my name is Jamie Linda and I'm the sales manager at Trocky Building Systems. Today we're going to talk about boat and RV storage. Since the day I started at Trocky Building Systems, people have been talking to me about boat and RV storage. The typical person has struggled, they own an RV themselves, and they've had a hard time finding a place to park it and where to put it. So they have come to us and said, hey, I had this great idea that I want to build a boat and RV park that'll include outside parking, uh, maybe canopies also, and closed buildings. And uh, it is true, there is a lot of demand for this type of product, but it comes with a lot of problems. And the problems are, you have to make it pencil, work out on paper. Because yes, you can rent them, but can you make any money? And that is, kind of what we're going to be talking about it today. Now right here that you're what I'm standing in front of is the most basic RV type of facility you can have which is where you park the units outside just on regular gravel. It's very inexpensive to be able to get this settled this way but you also need to use a lot of land because these big Units that you see behind me take a lot of space to be able to drive, especially with the trucks we make today that are extended cab and quad cabs where there's four people that can sit in it and with the extended beds. So when we look at the entire uh, industry as a whole, that uh, there has been over the last five years, there has been a huge amount of RV sold. And we're going to start with the first thing of what kind of RVs there are. The majority being sold today are these pull-behind models, okay? Then you can get even larger pull-behind called fifth wheels that you'll see behind me that uh, are usually taller and bigger. And then the RV that uh, is the biggest is called the Class A. The ones that uh, you drive right in front of, they take the biggest space and take the most room to back up. But in reality, they're only being sold at about uh, 10 to 15% of the market. Most are these. Now why I'm bringing that up is because what size of driveway and what size if you're gonna enclose the buildings you would build is dependent on the type of model, A, B, C, pull behind, tow trailer, boat trailers, pontoon boats, all the typical aspects you would have in an RV park. All right, let's start with the first most basic item that you're gonna have outside parking with gravel. Um, when you do put gravel, you think you probably don't have to follow the water drainage rules that the county or state will have. That's not true. You typically, because gravel is considered the same as blacktop, and you will have water runoff. So a lot of times you'll have to still have a retention pond. This site has a retention pond. And what you normally do is first take off the um, black dirt there is. You have to haul that away. You get to your clay or good subsoil. And then you should add eight inches of gravel above. A lot of times you'll put three inch rock down first and then the three quarter mixed with fines on top and then have it compacted. Doesn't cost very much, but uh, then you are ready to go. You normally slope it, and this is all on a 1% grade right here, sand, so you don't get any ponding of the water, which could be problems with ice in the future. So the whole thing is graded on a 1% slope going to the retention pond here. Then here, you mark the lines in yellow. Even if you notice here, the yellow uh, lines are starting to fade. If you do just spray paint the gravel, you always have to do that every year or two. And then you'll mark it. You should have each one of them marked when you rent. So you know who's there. And I also take a picture of every person who's in here. And you know their license plate because there's a whole separate rules as far as selling these in case they don't pay you. A lot of the states will allow them to be towed, okay? Like my policy is I do not sell it and try to get my money back, I tow it and just get it out of here. Because yes, it might be worth a lot of money, but I can't technically keep it 
because they only owe me $200 anyway. You only get the $200. So I believe the way you do this, if people don't pay, is tow it. So, you know, each spot, normally the people buy these machines and they do not know how to drive them very well. So they want a really large spot. Most of the bay widths are normally 12 feet to 11 feet. Some people go to 10 foot six, okay? These are 11 foot six and this particular site that I had between units. They are also, if you notice, they're all herringbone, which there means they're on a 60 degree angle. And the reason they do that is then the driveway space can be less, okay? And uh, that's was pretty much the way you should do it. If you do it 90 degrees, like normal parking, the driveway even has to be more. So normally you do them like herringbone type of layout. And um, <clears throat> there's a lot of different tricks people do as far as putting their numbers on. I just put it on a $1.50 thing I got from Home Depot. I, uh, a lot of people put flags in the back to help people align their machine when they drive in. And because um, you're going to get a lot of variants. If we look over here, you get some small ones that are no problem, some old antiquers. A lot of times, you know, you'll have those to the really large ones that'll take more space. And so um, what is this driveway distance that you have between them? There's a lot of discussions on that, and it depends on, you know, where you are and what type of model you have. And what I've found is I have, this is the biggest aisle, and then I have smaller aisles. So I try to charge more if you want to be in this aisle than I do on the different sizes in the other aisles. So you have to make, you should tier it so it's not all the same price to be able to try to maximize what you can make on the, the units. Now that's just kind of a rudimentary, what we have going on with the outside parking. You want to know who's in every unit and um, you want to make sure you understand how people, when they, when they leave, they got to tell you they leave, okay? Because all of a sudden this unit is empty. Did they move out or not? And so I have found that uh, we, at the first of the month, we at, send them an email that says, are you still here? If they're on automatic payment, we run. If they're not on automatic payment, I lock them out by the fifth and I'll move them out on the sixth. Because they ain't here, it's over. Okay, you have to tell us. So there's a little different procedural things you do when you want to um, rent for outside parking. Now this, a lot of times, if you want to build a whole site of outside parking, you have to buy the land for very cheap because it, uh, it doesn't make that much money. You are using so much land to get a $60 or $80 they're paying for outside. You have to get the land for a dollar a square foot or something. This land where I'm standing on now is $3 a square foot. I don't make much money on it. Basically, I am, this is a holding tank because I bought so many, so many acres that I'm adding more buildings that I need it and wiping out the RVs. And I am wiping out, when I wipe out the RVs, I'm raising the price, okay? Because, uh, in reality, in my brain, it would be better if it's all building, but I'm not sure this site could ever be all that. The other thing that we're gonna to move to now is what I think you'll make the most money on, which is uh, having these types of units inside a um, actual building. When I talk about boat RVs, I'm also, also aligning with boats because a boat owner will want to store his boat inside. And a lot of boats can get pretty big. A lot of times you'll have a, a, a one a 10 foot high door, especially boats that have like a rack on them. And what's a really good unit is a 12 by 30 unit. And that can also handle some smaller RVs. And, um, or you can make them 12 by 40, 12 by 35, 12 by 40. And, but some of those might take a little more headroom. Then you would get into this size here. And this size is a 14 foot eave height. The door is 11 by 12. And this can store 
I would say 75 to 80% of all RVs, this size unit, 40 feet deep. And um, so to me, it's a sweet spot as far as fairly reasonable to build and you get a higher rent. And um, it's the, uh, uh, the size you have. Some of these, you can also put electric in it. This one doesn't have any electric, but some people do. And if you did decide to also do electric, because they'll ask you all the time, you always have it as a separate fee. So each one is on their own circuit breaker. And what I've found is that people say, I don't want the electric. I'm not going to pay the $40 a month until a week later. They call you back and say, I want the electric. And that helps you generate more money. Normally, I don't like electric because they could cause fires. But if you did decide to do it, that is how I would suggest you do it. So here is this large unit that people drive in. Now, if you notice the bollard treatment we have here, the, I put two six inch bollards and I also made them so the bollards are wider than the door jam so the people will hit this. I wasn't going to do it originally, but after I watched these people back up, they don't know how to back up very well. So I wanted to protect my investment. And so this costs a little bit up front but then you're solved as far as the issue is. This would also be three feet in the ground. And I made them close to the building. Some in more southern states, you would not do that. You could have them out of foot. But so I, it's easier to snow plow. I don't have that much snow around it. So I'm in a northern climate. But that is what I like as a primo unit or even smaller. The shorter one, 30 foot deep would be good for RVs, but 12 foot base, because there's a lot of people who put trailers, businesses, all the bigger type commercial tenants, you're gonna pile it all into one. And uh, this will make the most money per square foot. Okay, you'll make a lot more money than the outside parking or the canopies that we have already discussed. And uh, so that's uh, what my recommendation is here. Now, this will not handle a class A and we will go look at what's needed for that. Many times when you look to having boat RV, you don't have enough space or want to have these larger driveways, like a 50 or 60 foot driveway that you use for some of the big units that we have mentioned. But uh, you might have a spot or two to put. Now this person right here had one outdoor spot and then made a large building to have a couple and this is for the maximum size for a class A unit. What a class A unit will mean that the door is 12 feet wide by 14 foot high. Now if you notice here, he did not use a traditional roll up mini storage door. He used a commercial sectional door and that is highly recommended for this because that door is really heavy. And a lot of times you get an added amenity by having an automatic door opener. So there'll be an automatic door opener for this. And many people will give the customer a door opener, maybe with a deposit, so that they can have an automatic door opener like you'd have at home. Now these doors are typically purchased locally and installed by a local um, door installer you know, uh, overhead door, Wayne Dalton door, Haas door. These are just to name a few who have these larger type units. And there you notice this guy has a door on the side and that's to get access separately. But there is another type of thing you can have with these big units is also in this sectional door, having a real swing door to go in it. So besides RVs, it might be for a business type person and that kind of a nice feature for if you want to go to the more of the commercial size. So here he just put a couple of units in. Now the rate has to be pretty high in this. I know this is over three to four hundred dollars a unit is what he's getting for this particular size. And uh, this one is made with a standard rib panel, but we also make them now. This was a few years old. We make them in our flush jam so it gets that smooth look too and uh, which is what I would prefer. But this is one alternative. Here I'm standing in front of another example of a boat and RV storage. This is our newer design where the building behind me can handle class A units. The units are um, 
14 feet wide. The door is 12 by 14. Now, different than the sectional door with the other one I had showed you, this one is using the Trackrite 977 door. And that is a door that can be open and shut with a chain hoist, okay? And it's actually less expensive if you wanted to go this route and didn't want to put in like automatic door openers that you would have in the sectional. The person comes, lifts up the door, the chain spins, and then you pull it all the way to the top and then you can rent. And if you notice with this building, they also made shorter ones. Those are the 12 by 30 or 40s with the uh, or 14 foot high with the 12 foot high door to be able to handle and conobate the other sizes. Now, when you build a uh, RV, a fully RV functional facility, a lot of times people expect other amenities, uh, possibly electric in the units. And they might also, if you get very large, you might have a wash bay and also a pump station so they can clean out. And uh, those are alternative things. Normally you charge for the wash bay. Some places in the Southwest United States, they might give you a wash bay. You get one token a month, be able to clean your unit. And that goes with the rent. There's a lot of different uh, uh, options for you to be able to uh, sell additional items. Another thing that we'd like to discuss right now is canopy buildings. And so that's where you don't fully enclose the unit, but have just a canopy. And a lot of the canopies are also built on a um, 60 degree angle so that you can use less driveway distance to back up. The other thing with the canopy, some might have lights inside to help illuminate it, but normally they're open. And the uh, canopies, they usually get twice the rent a regular outside parking spot is. They cost about 75% of a completely enclosed building. So they're not that cheap, but they do um, serve a purpose to get out of the sun. They are normally used in the uh, southern part of the United States, where you get the sun beating, especially the southwest, the west, and even down in Florida, to keep them out of the sun. In the northern climates, you a lot of times want to completely enclose them because you want to shelter them from the snow issue. Another thing, if you have a tight space, that we have an option is we can build our building units on a 40, excuse me, a 60 degree angle. This is actually building the building on a 60 degree angle. This is a new concept and we can have it just like here with the flush jams and headers. Now, the, the reason you do that is again, to mitigate or minimize the amount of driveway space. And if you did build one of these, um, you also want to put marked lines to help guide the person to drive their RV into the space because they're coming in at an angle. And uh, so it's kind of a new concept, and uh, but it helps because there is a demand for this. It's just how do you make money at it? That is the essential question with RV storage. So I've showed you a lot about the different RV types of storage you could have. And, um, but the big question that you have to get your head around is how do I make it work for me financially? And if you expect to find land, you can put RV storage in large cities, that isn't gonna happen. You have to get land. You need a lot of land at a fairly reasonable price. Now people will find you. So it's, it isn't you have all of the constraints of being on the main road and stuff. You can be off a little bit, but if you're in a spot that doesn't have enough, you know, you can be off the main drag and they will find you because of the internet and you will locate it. Because when you build, to me, the um, you will make money if you can get the land cheap enough. But... Um, and you'll make more money on enclosed spaces than you will with a canopy or 
outside parking. Outside parking is normally makes a little bit more per square foot than you can having the canopy, okay? So it's all the a math of what the rental rates are where you're located. But one of the things you do have to remember, because if you have the option to actually build a normal unit like I have behind me, that will make more money per square foot than these buildings here. You can try to make it close, but it won't be quite the same. Now, a lot of people add it together. You hopefully get all aspects of it. And if you can do that, then you can make something where everybody calls you and they can rent your storage from climate control, to regular ambient temperature, boat RV, I got the whole package. And one of the large things to remember, the large REITs in our, in our world, the big players do not build these because they want to make the most money possible. That does leave you some opportunity. Well, I hope you helped you with this, but my suggestion is you talk to each one of the regional managers, or you can call me yourself, because I love to talk to anybody about the situation to see if it can work for you. I want to thank you for watching this video and all the other videos that Trocky has done. And um, if you have, and I hope you are successful in all your mini storage endeavors.